Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to create a YouTube thumbnail using GIMP. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.22 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of free GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here. You can get more by becoming a DMD Premium member. And I have tons of free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. And as I mentioned, you can get more by becoming a DMD Premium member. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. I'll be using a couple of free stock photos for today's tutorial. So this one, I went with the original size. And then this next one here for the background, I went with the large size. Here is the final thumbnail design we'll be making for today's tutorial. So let's dive right in. Typically a YouTube thumbnail is gonna have dimensions of 1920 by 1080, or you can go with the smaller 1280 by 720 size. So I'll start off by creating my first document. I'll go to file, new, and I'll go with 1920 by 1080 and click OK. So this will be our main document for the thumbnail design. It doesn't matter what the background color is because we're gonna cover this up anyway. I will be using a color palette for this and I can access it by going to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, Palettes. So here is the palette I wanna use. I'll just double click on that to bring it open in my palettes editor. As you can see, just five simple colors. Next up, I'm going to bring in the subject for our photo. So I'm gonna open that up by coming over here to my file explorer and just click and drag this into GIMP. You can drag it right here on the Wilbur icon and I'll come over here and hit convert to convert that to GIMP's native sRGB color space. You can of course also just go to file open and find your image. So I'll hit the B key on my keyboard to grab my paths tool and hold control, zoom in. All I did was loosely outline the path here or outline the subject, I should say, with the path tool. And if I click and hold my mouse and drag it, that'll create a curve. So I'm just doing that along the outline of my subject. Again, it does not have to be perfect. And I've actually done this ahead of time. So let me come over here to this composition, unhide the path. There's the final path there. You'll see I did not cut this little shape out and the reason for that is this part isn't really gonna make it in here. But I still have my pass tool selected so I'm just gonna click on this path. So inside of my pass tool, I'm gonna come over here and go to selection from path and then hit control C to copy that. And come over here to our composition where we're creating our thumbnail, control V to paste. That's going to paste this as a floating selection layer. I can see that by coming back here to my layers panel. So here's my floating selection. I'll hit Shift S on the keyboard. That's gonna grab my scale tool. And if I hold control and use my mouse wheel, I can zoom out a little bit. Now I'm just going to scale this down until it fits inside the composition and fits the way I want it. Probably go about right there. And come over here and hit scale. So this is still a floating selection layer. What I'll do is come over here to my layers panel and I'm gonna click to put this on a new layer. So there's our new layer. Let me just double click on here and name this model. Hit the enter key. So there is our photo of the model. You might see the marching ants here. That's just kind of a glitch. If I hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel, that'll go away. So next I'm gonna place my background photo and I'll do that by coming over here to my file explorer and just click and drag my background photo into there and hit convert. You can also go to file, open as layers and that'll do the same thing. So now what I'll do is just click and drag this so that this layer is below the model layer. And let's just double click and name this b-ball court. So my model's on the left side, but the way YouTube works is they put a little timestamp in the right corner here, which means I can't really put a logo there. So I'm gonna put my elements on the left side and move the model over to the right side. So what I'll do is hit the M key on my keyboard and just click on the model and hold the control key as I drag her to the right. So probably about right here and release. And then what I'll do is come over here, make that my active layer. And then I'm gonna hit Shift F. That's gonna grab my flip tool. And I'm just gonna click on this once 
making sure the direction is horizontal and that'll flip her the other way. She does have some text on her shirt, which is now backwards, but that's okay. So once we've done that, you'll see she's obstructing this hoop. So I do want to fix that. I'll come over here to the b-ball court layer, shift S to grab the scale tool and just scale this up a bit. And you'll see that's moving the basketball hoop sort of out of the way. So maybe we'll go about right there. Make sure your little chain link is locked, by the way. That's going to make sure this scales with the same aspect ratio so it doesn't look all stretched out. And then I'll hit scale. And there you can see that. Let me hit the M key, maybe just move her over slightly. And there we go. All right, let's come back to the model layer. Now let's add the stroke around her. So to do that, I'll come over here, create a new layer. And you can see this is already named stroke. Fill it with transparency. You guys will probably have this name something different, but I did this earlier. So I'll click OK. Let me alt click on the model layer and come over here to the paths tab. And we'll come down here. We're going to convert this selection to a path using selection to path. And then control shift A to deselect that. And now I want to stroke this. So I'll come over here and I'm going to click the paint along the path icon. And the line width I'll keep set to 20. Let me just switch my colors. I can reset them and then flop this so that white is my foreground color. We're going to stroke this with a solid color. And the line style I'll make sure is just a straight line and I'll hit stroke. So the issue here, if I hold control and zoom in, is the path goes along the bottom there. And that's not what I want, so I'll hit control Z. Let me unhide this path. Hit the B key to grab the path tool. Click on here. Hold control, zoom in with my mouse wheel. So if I hold control and click, I'm going to create two nodes. And now I can just drag these nodes down a bit. That's just going to ensure I don't have a white line going across the bottom. And then one last time, let's try that. So I'll stroke this, same settings, and let's click off of the path tool and hide this path. So there is our outline subject. So the next thing I'll do is sort of color match the main model with the background and also blur the background so that the main model stands out a bit better. So I'll come over here to my layers panel. Let's start by color correcting the model. So we're on the model layer and I'll go to colors, levels. So I'm just going to adjust the brightness contrast here using the sliders. I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to this tool. And then I'm going to come over here to the color channels and just sort of color correct this a little bit. All right, so that looks pretty good. Here's a before, here is an after. And let me just come back to the value. I'm just going to brighten this up a bit more and click OK. And the last piece here is going to be to blur this background layer. So let's start with the blur. I'll go to filters. Blur, Lens Blur, and if I turn the radius up, it'll blur it more. The highlight factor is just going to add some highlights to the blur. We don't really need that necessarily, maybe a little bit. And I'll click OK. So now it looks like we almost have some nice depth of field or something. All right, next we're going to move on to adding borders to our image. I did do a double border design for the original, so we'll do that here. So let's come over to our layers panel, create a new layer. I'll name this border, hit the enter key. And this is good right above the b-ball court layer. I'll hit control A, that's gonna select everything. So that's the shortcut for select all. Then I'll go to select border. And I'll go with 25, make sure this is set to pixels. I also have the border style set to hard and I'll click OK. So now I'm going to create a gradient border. So I'll hit the G key to grab my gradient tool. And I'm just going to click and drag this to draw my gradient. And you'll see here my shape set to linear and my colors are going to be foreground to background RGB. So I don't like these colors. And also let me swap them so that the foreground color is in the top left, background, bottom right. So I have these palette colors over here. To change my gradient colors to the palette colors, I'll left click on this pink color. That's going to change the foreground color. And then if I hold control and click, that'll change the background color to this blue color. That looks a lot better to me. So if I click on the endpoint here and then hit the enter key, that'll apply that gradient. 
And now I want to do the inside border, so I'll hit Control i That's going to invert my selection, so now we just have this inside selection. I'll go to Select, Shrink, and I shrunk this by 20 pixels again, so I'll click OK. So we'll need a new layer for this. I'll create a new layer. We'll name it Inner Border and hit the Enter key. We'll convert this to a path, so I'll go to the Paths tab, and we'll go to Selection of Path. So there it is, Control shift a to deselect it, and now we're going to stroke it, but I want the color to be white, so let's reset the colors here. We'll flip that, and I'll come over here and stroke this. And I don't need this line to be that wide, so I'll change this to 5 and click Stroke. So there is that inner border. I'm going to change the layer mode of this, so I'll come over to the Layers panel. On the inner border layer, I'm going to come over here to the mode, and scroll down, I believe I went with exclusion. So there is that inner border. So really all that's left before we export this is to add the text and the logos. So let's start off with the text. I'm gonna grab my text tool, and the font I have this set to Bond Shift Bold, which is a free font I downloaded. I do have a tutorial on how to download and install free fonts for GIMP. I also know the size of my first line of text is 125, and I'm fine with the color being white. And also let me reset this actually back to zero. So now I'll come over here and click to create my first line of text. And with the caps lock key on, I'll type how to design. And then with the caps lock key still on, I'll click to create a second line of text. And I'm gonna type thumbnails. I'll hit control A to select all that. Change the font size to 200 and hit the enter key. I'm also gonna change the color of this to make things less confusing in a moment. So I'll change that to black and grab the Move tool, and I'm just going to eyeball this so that these look fairly aligned. They don't have to be perfect right now. So the next thing I want to do is add a text box to this. So to do that, let me come below the Thumbnails layer, and I'll come over here and click to create a new layer. And I'm going to name this Text Box, and click OK. So now I'll come over and grab my Rectangle Select tool, and I'm just going to roughly draw a rectangle around my text and release. And I'm just going to fill this in with white, so I'll click and drag this white color inside the selection area and hit Control shift a to deselect that. Finally, I'm going to shrink the size of the text box layer down to just the size of the rectangle. So I'm going to go to Layer, Cropped Content. All right, so now we're going to bring in our logo, so I'll come back here to my File Explorer, and I've got this Wilbur logo here. So I'll click and drag that onto my composition. And then I also have my Davies Media Design logo, so I'll click and drag that. Hit the M key to grab the Move tool, and I'm just going to roughly move these into place, like so. And I believe I had the Wilbur logo above all these elements, so I'll put it right there. And I'm also, just to make things easier, going to move the stroke layer below all the text stuff. That'll make it easier to select everything, as you'll see. And of course, we have to move the model layer below the stroke layer as well. All right, so now we have all the elements in here. I'm going to align everything right now. So I'm going to hit the Q key on my keyboard. And I'm just going to click. Let's actually go with the text box as the first item. And then shift click on all the other items. So we selected the text box first with the alignment tool and then everything else. Now we'll come over here and relative to first item, we're going to center align everything. So there you can see now everything's nice and centered up. If I wanted to move multiple elements, for example, the two lines of text, the text box and the Wilbur logo, I can come over here and just transform link those items together. And then when I grab my Move tool and move one of these items, all of those items will go with it. So I can just move these elements up slightly. And if I wanted to include my logo in that, I can transform lock that one as well and then just move everything together. All right, so the last thing I'll do is put the finishing touches on this design. So I'm just going to add pretty much shadow filters to all of my text as well as my subject. So let's come over here. First, let me just unlock these items. And let's come over here to the How To Design text. So I'll go to Filters, Light and Shadow, Long Shadow. 
And I'll change the color of this. Let's go with one of these colors. Let's just go with black actually, click OK. And change the style to fading fixed length. And I can shorten the length of this. Probably about right there is good. And I'll click OK. I'm gonna apply that same effect to the text box. So I'll click on the text box layer, filters, repeat long shadow, and there is that long shadow again. And let me do my logo as well. So I'll click on that, filters, repeat long shadow. And finally, I'll add a long shadow to the subject. So let's come over here to the model layer, filters, and we'll go to re-show long shadow because I do want to do slightly different colors. So let's come over here to color and we'll go with this color here. You guys can copy my HTML notation. Change the style to fading fixed length. So there you can see that shadow there. You could tweak that if you want, but I'll click OK, and there's our final design. The last thing we need to do is export this. YouTube is going to accept JPEG, PNG, and GIF files so long as they are under two megabytes. I usually go with JPEG, so I'll go to File, Export As, and I can just override this file here. So I'll come over here, click Export. Just make sure this ends in .jpg. I'll hit Replace in my case because I'm replacing an existing file. I usually set the quality to 100 unless I need to save room. So if the file's too big, I can decrease that and I'll hit export again. And there is our final result. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video, but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.